All righty. Welcome back, guys. Thank you for tuning in. I want to do some training today. And, you know, I just got back from a sales mastery summit in Phoenix, Arizona with Jeremy Miner and his team with seventh level. And we were there for two days, I guess three days, but two full days of training and understanding human behavior, understanding how to maximize our sales. It was phenomenal. I've got a lot of fun stuff that I'll be sharing over, you know, the next handful of, of episodes on this podcast. And so stay tuned, really excited about that. But, you know, just understanding human behavior, understanding why people act the way they do and what causes them to act the way that they do gives you so much leverage in your conversations. You know, the way that people are buying and, and the way that people are selling, like the game has changed. The old sales tactics, the old ways of doing things, they just don't work as effectively anymore as they used to. And so, you know, us learning to adapt to the way that people are buying things allows us to, to continue to improve, to continue to empower our teams with the skill set, but also the process that will allow them to be successful. A lot of this past weekend, we spent time, you know, learning how to use our tonality, learning what questions to ask and when to really make it the customer's idea, the prospect's idea. And there's a lot of power in that, right? I mean, you think about where you're currently at right now and where you want to go, there's a gap, right? Whatever you have done up to this point in your life, your current skill set, your current capabilities have gotten you to where you currently are. To get to where you currently want to go, you're going to need to, to fill this gap. And the way to do that is to upgrade your skill set, learn new skills so you can get there, but also learn the processes to work smart and make sure that we're working on the right things. Okay. And so, you know, over the next few weeks, I don't know how long it could be a long time because there's a lot of value that I received and a lot of things that are going to help me and help you as far as skill set goes today. I wanted to really focus in on sales process. Okay. And you know, for those of you listening to this, I would imagine that you're selling insurance and you're in a captive agency and you're selling more than one product line of insurance. You're selling auto insurance, you're selling homeowners insurance, renters, all the fire products that we can offer as well as life insurance and health insurance products. And so today I want to talk about really conceptualizing, you know, as a whole for our agency, where all of these opportunities are being created, where we're getting leads and really talk about the nuances with each one in hopes to get you thinking about your current process and find ways to improve that process, get to a new level, right? And so guys, this, this whole game that we call sales and job that we call sales, what we're doing that we call sales, there's levels to this game, right? There are a lot of you that are playing at a really, really high level, but just understand that there's another level above that. And there's some of you that are playing at maybe a basic level. There are levels to this game that we call sales. And today I want to just cover the fundamental areas that allow us to just write policies in a very natural, seamless way. And it's understanding where the opportunities are getting creative. Okay. So I want to come over to this whiteboard and I want to just draw this out for you so you can conceptualize exactly where your opportunities are coming from or where you can create opportunities and talk through the nuances of each. Okay. And, and this will make sense as we go, but this is a sales process that, you know, think I would encourage you as we go throughout this to really think about your sales process, right? This is my sales process. This is how I was able to write 200 plus life insurance applications every single year. This is what I did. And I'm going to conceptualize it. I'm going to break it down very, very simply for you. My encouragement for each of you, my challenge is as I go throughout my sales process, think about your sales process. Think about how can I get my sales process to a new level? And, and you know, guys, we're going to work on sales skills. We're going to work on developing that, learning to utilize our tonality in a way that actually is persuasive, learning to know what questions to ask and when to make it the customer's idea. We're going to upgrade our skill set, no doubt. But today I want to talk about where we're even going to create opportunities, all of the opportunities that we're able to create from our agencies on a day-to-day -day basis. Okay. And so what we're going to do is I'm going to walk you through that. Okay. So as far as writing and we're going to, we're going to stick to life insurance today, but as far as, far as writing life insurance, let's talk about our, our, our leads. 
okay? So where can we create opportunities to write life insurance? Well, there's, there's really two main areas. We're gonna make this really simple. So the first area we're gonna call current customers. You have a book full of current customers that are calling you every single day to make payments, to file claims, to ask about their bill. Like they're calling you. You also have a book of business that you can run lists. Okay, so we're gonna talk and we're gonna break this down as to where we can create opportunities with our current customers. Again, pay attention to your process. What can I take away from this to make my process better? You know, it's, it's interesting. As far as success goes, success is a choice, right? But what I have seen as far as a, a common denominator with highly successful people that are consistent and that they're playing this game at a really high level is that they all learn from other people's mistakes. They all learn from other people to speed up their learning, to speed up their success. Instead of having to make the same mistakes, why not learn from someone so you can avoid the mistakes altogether? So my hope is that there's something here that can make your process better. Learn from me, right? It took me six plus years to get this process in place, but I'm telling you, like it can change the game if you let it, okay? And I'm not saying that everything here is gonna be a good fit for you, and maybe you're doing a lot of this, which is great, but I hope to help you think a little bit differently, to make these things a little bit more effective for you so you can close more policies. We could put the sales skills aside and the tonality aside, and if you can just implement something here and make your process better, you will sell more. I was always taught, you know, I, I grew up fishing, and you know, we, I would go fly fishing with my dad. And we go up into our local river and we put our waders on, get our boots on, I tie the flies. In fact, now, you know, I tie my dad's flies because he's got to put his glasses on and it's like, I can just get it done quicker so we can get out fishing. But I learned a lot from my father in fishing and, you know, he, he taught me how to do it and we had a blast. Some of the best memories in my life is, is fishing with my dad. But, you know, as he was teaching me, I remember him always using this phrase, this this word called the honey hole, right? Hey, 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 Coulter, right up there, you see that like slow pocket of water? Like, that's the honey hole. And, and what he meant by that, guys, is like, there's fish in there, okay? All you need to do is cast your line in there and you're probably gonna catch a fish. We're gonna find out where the fish are in our agencies on a day-to-day -day basis. That if you just cast your line, if you just have the conversation, you can probably write a policy, okay? And this is where it becomes a system, right? Systems and processes allow for consistency. Systems and processes allow for us to write life insurance at a consistent level, okay? So let's get into this. As far as our current customers, there's a few different ways that we can create opportunities for ourselves in selling life insurance. And mind you, I'm gonna use this model for life insurance. But here's the cool thing. This model can apply to writing umbrella policies. This model can apply to writing supplemental health policies, auto policies, like it's a model. So as you think about this, you can implement this model into what you're doing in other areas as well. So our current customers, where can we create opportunities with our current customers? Well, the first thing is that we get inbound calls. So we've got inbound sales. Inbound sales is a big one, okay? You're getting customers every single day that are calling into your office to add policies. They've already got their, you know, their, their cars and their home insured with you. Maybe they bought a new car. That's an inbound sell. Why can't we create life insurance opportunities from that? We can. Someone's calling in to add a homeowner's policy. Maybe they got a new, they moved, right? Like they need a new policy. That is what I mean by inbound sales. These are our current customers, not anything new business. I want you to separate the two. The next one is going to be inbound service. Inbound service. There are people that are calling into your office that yeah, they might not be adding a policy. They might just be paying a bill. Why can't we have a life insurance conversation with those people? And then the last one here is going to be our outbound sales. We can call our current customers and create a life insurance opportunities even though they don't call us. But obviously if I have someone calling into my office to add a vehicle that has a loan on it and I'm going to say, you know what, I recognize an opportunity for life insurance, I can talk to them about life insurance to pay that loan off. The nuance of how I'm going to get into that conversation is going to be different than how I would get into a conversation when I'm calling outbound to one of my current customers. Because now it's a little bit different. With the inbound, 
they are setting aside time to talk with me. So there's some things that I don't really necessarily need to do that I would need to do with calling out to someone, okay? See what I'm saying? Like the approach, even though we have the same strategy of how to write the life insurance, will be different with however the opportunity is created in your office, okay? And so to simplify even further, so outbound sales, guys, these are our lists, right? If you are not running lists in your agencies, to write life insurance, you are missing out. But you can you can run a list, you can create a campaign of all of the vehicles on your book of business that have a loan. And your strategy for that campaign can be, you're going to offer life insurance to those people to pay off the loan, okay? Again, the nuance of how you're gonna bring that up, how you're gonna get into that conversation is going to be different. And if you wanna be effective, we gotta learn those things, okay? So lists. What about inbound service? Are you taking advantage of all of the inbound calls coming into your office every day? Like something beautiful happens here that instead of us having to interrupt people's day, they're already calling us. They set aside time in their day. And so we should be taking advantage of all of these inbound service calls and do what we all know is pivoting, okay? Are we pivoting in our offices? Are we taking advantage of all those customers that are calling us every single day, okay? And then inbound sales, okay? These are going to be, like I've talked about, these are gonna be our added policies. When people call in to add a policy, think about the psychology of what's going on with the situation. They're anticipating their bill to change because they're adding a policy, whereas, here with pivoting, their bill's probably not gonna change, so they're not preparing, they're not prepared for their bill to change. And so the way that I bring up life insurance with an added policy might be a lot different than how I would pivoting. You gotta keep in mind human behavior, what's going on in our customers' minds when they call in to make a payment. I'll tell you, it's not to pay more for life insurance. Whereas this one, they're already paying more, and so it's, it's, it's a different approach. So our current customers, are we taking advantage of all the inbound sales coming to the office? Are we, are we creating opportunities for different lines? Inbound service, are we taking advantage of those calls to create opportunities for ourselves? And by the way, guys, like here, the timing of your pivot matters. Are you working smart with that? You know, for me, for a long time as a team member, I remember all, like it was ingrained in my mind. Like I just imagine this stamp on my brain that says, pivot, pivot, pivot to life insurance. We're on a life insurance promotion, pivot, right? I knew I needed to pivot, but I was got like so like into this order taking mindset of like, if I just work really hard and if I just pivot to everybody, I'm gonna sell a lot of policies. There's a lot of truth to that. But I think we get a little blind, like a little blinded by the fact that like, are we even paying attention to the timing? Like what if it's not a good time to pivot? What if someone's like pissed off about their bill? But I recognize an opportunity to pivot. One brand new insurance culture would still bring up life insurance because I was working hard, okay? And I credit a lot of my success to that, but when I started to really move the lever and really start to get in production that changed my income, changed my life, was when I started to just work a little smarter and understand like, is the timing right? And one belief, one belief that limited me was if I do not pivot right then and there, then and there on that phone call, that opportunity is lost forever. I'd feel guilty. But as it took me time to look at that and really understand it, I realized just because I don't pivot right then and there does not mean that that opportunity is lost forever. Because guess what? I got this thing on my desk that's got some numbers. I can actually just dial in a few numbers and I can get back on the phone with them, okay? So your timing matters, but are you taking advantage of those current customers you get to talk with every day, okay? It's an opportunity for you to over deliver. It's an opportunity for you to build trust without doing it in a way that every other salesperson does. And you get to the end and you wonder why your customer's saying, oh, I just need to think about it. Because you're, we're not working smart up, up front. We're not using strategy. We're not catering our approach and understanding human behavior, understanding what's going on in our customers' minds. We're just checking boxes and we're just pivoting, okay? And then lists, like are we, are we running lists in our agencies? You should be, right? Reach out if you wanna know some of the best lists that I would recommend. But let's move on to the next piece of, of creating opportunities. Where else can we create opportunities with our agencies? Well, you probably guessed it. It's our new business opportunities, okay? If you're listening to this, you are probably in some sort of sales position and you probably wanna write more business, okay? Are you, you know, our customers know us for the auto insurance, right? And so I know you're writing auto insurance business, but are you, are you giving an effort to write life insurance with those new business customers. Because if you're not, you're missing out on a lot, okay? But I want you to think a little bit deeper about this. Think a little more strategically about how can I, how can I make life insurance make sense for this new household, 
right? The nuances are gonna change. But with new business, guys, we've got really two sections of new business, okay? Bear with me on the writing here. I hope to explain this so this all makes sense. But new business, we've got our inbound, inbound new business, and then we've got our outbound new business. They're both necessary. They're both important if you wanna to get to the highest level of this game, okay? And so let's talk about the, uh, the inbound sales, okay? When I say inbound, what I mean is the prospect initiated some something on their end and they're shopping for their insurance. They're inquiring about insurance, okay? And so some examples of these are our, you know, some of you get leads from your, your company. And so these would be like your inbound company leads. They went on to some website and they put their information on there. They're inquiring about getting quotes. That's an inbound lead. The next one is maybe, you know, you have an inbound quote for a new household. You've got someone that says, hey, you know, I just was hoping to get a quote on my auto insurance, right? Again, they initiated on their end. And then the next two, are, and I don't have enough room on here, but the next two are internet leads, okay? I get that we're calling out on these things, but how did they get there in the first place? They filled out some form, something happened, something caused them to want to shop their insurance. So it's technically an inbound lead. And then the last one is referrals. You get a referral from a customer that refers their friend and that friend calls into your office. They are calling inbound. That's another way. And then as far as outbound goes, these are gonna be, you know, you are calling out. Customer did not submit any form. They did not inquire about a quote. You are calling them, okay? And so this could be any of our older customers that left us. Maybe you're calling these people back to quote them, okay? They did not inquire about insurance, right? You're interrupting their day. The nuances in how you approach that are going to be different than an inbound lead. Think about all the people that you quoted in uh, last year for their auto insurance, let's say. And like, how many quotes did you do? Like, go and go and look at that. But a great strategy is to call a lot of those people back that you did quote last year that you didn't close. And I love that strategy and approach because guess what? You've got all their information more than likely already in the system. So a lot of the job's already done. It makes it an easier way to get them to agree to a quote again. And again, you can create an opportunity for yourself there. Quoted, not written, let's call that. So quoted, quoted, not written. And then the last one is referrals. If you're calling an outbound referral, it was that example I said earlier of customer gives you a referral and you're calling outbound. The, refer, or the person they refer you to didn't necessarily request a quote from you. And so again, that's a place that we can create opportunities. Simplifying this down guys, there are multiple, multiple opportunities that we can create for ourselves to create life insurance opportunities, to create health insurance opportunities, umbrella opportunities, whatever it is, right? But understanding, are they current customers, or are they new business is important. You already have some level of trust, I would hope, with your current customers, like you're their insurance company, you're the people that already helped them, there's some level of trust there. Whereas with new business, you don't have that. You've gotta kind of build that right away. And Understanding like, is it an inbound opportunity or an outbound opportunity? Understanding and breaking these areas apart allows you to start to actually make some progress with your conversation. This is where the fish are, right? This is where the life insurance opportunities lie, is within each of these opportunities. Understanding and simplifying them down like this allows us to one, know where to go, catch the fish. Two, make sure that we're remembering to do all of these things. And three, get a system in place in our agency that is predictable for our production. And so again, if a lot of you listening to this, you're like, oh my gosh, I didn't even think about looking at all the quotes that we ran last year that we didn't close. Here's your sign to go and just work on that, right? Or maybe a lot of you are like, you know what, I am lacking on my pivoting and I get to talk to people a day on average. Think about like, what if you just focused on that for a minute and, and really tailored something for you that works for you and wrote your own script of what's the best way to pivot and really dove into that. Or, you know, maybe it's your added policies. Like, I didn't even think about that culture. Like they're calling in, they're expecting their bill to change. Why don't I work a little smarter and offer them and, and build value on a life insurance policy? Lists, maybe you're like, yeah, we're not even running lists. Here's your sign, run lists, okay? Or maybe you're like, you know what? Yeah, like I should call a lot of those older customers. And so it's again, this is where the fish are. But I wanna reiterate, and this will come in, in future videos, that the way that I will bring up life insurance, for example, 
with someone that is calling in to add a vehicle is going to be different than the way that I would bring up life insurance with someone that, you know, I'm calling outbound to, uh, you know, maybe it's a recurrent customer of mine. The nuances of each of these things are different. And I would encourage you to kind of identify, okay, like pivoting, like let's work a little smarter. Let's understand our customers, understand, okay, if someone calls in to make a payment, are they expecting to leave with a life insurance policy? Are they expecting their bill to go up? No. So what's an easy knee jerk response from those people if we don't do it in a smooth, logical way? Well, I need to think about it, Coulter. I actually have that coverage through work. A lot of these premature, a lot of these objections that you guys are getting could be prevented from just understanding the nuance of you know what, I've got to tailor that a little bit differently at the beginning. How can I get into a life insurance conversation and prevent objections from happening in the first place, but also make it logically make sense for what they already have with me and what they know me for, right? Learning to tailor your approach, like the, like the, the, the strategy of writing this could be the same, but the way that you start the conversation and get into the conversation, which quite honestly is where a lot of you are struggling, is going to be different. Think about your customers, think about what's going on in their mind and think about how can I get into a conversation in more of a smooth and natural way and watch what happens to your production. So unfortunately guys, my battery is blinking at me, which means it's time to wrap up this training video. There's more of this to come, but my challenge to you is find one or two of these areas, evaluate your process and find where you can make your process better and just start working in these different buckets. Go and cast your line where the fish are and you're going to, aut you're, like, you're automatically going to elevate your production to the next level. But stay tuned as we're going to focus on more of these nuances of what do we say when it's an outbound lead versus an inbound lead? Like how can we tailor that approach based on that with, and go with human behavior instead of going against it? I appreciate each of you. Hope you have a great rest of your day. Thank you.